All right, what's good everyone? OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about the potential flood of AAA Japanese titles and just AAA ports coming over to Nintendo's next system based on what I think they are going to do. This is a topic that I've discussed in bits and pieces there just because there's always been the Nintendo Switch Pro talk and the next gen Nintendo talk and I actually put together quite a number of my thoughts into one video because I do get this quite a bit with when Nintendo is going to release their next gen system, what we could see on it. So I wanted to put together something on here on that but before we get into any of that please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new and click that notification bell to get my videos first now let's go ahead and start off first here with the whole next gen nintendo switch talk it's been heating up a little bit we had a lot of it last year and then of course the nintendo switch oled put a damper on all of that also what nintendo had to say put a damper on all of that but as we move towards 2023 we're getting through 2022 we're already into march it's going to be april pretty soon here nintendo's definitely working on something they are definitely working on something because we all know that anytime that a company releases a current system they're already hard at work or working on what they're going to do next Heck, Nintendo's even stated as much in their investor meetings saying the next system that's in the line after Nintendo Switch. And they've invested over a billion dollars in game development. And that's not all for the Nintendo Switch, guys. That's also for next gen gaming for them as well. So things are definitely going to get a lot more interesting as we head towards the mid and last part of the year with potential rumors and more things coming up. Now let's actually discuss a little bit more about the system itself because one thing that's a point of contention whenever it comes to Nintendo systems is the power of it. Is it going to be underpowered? Is it going to be too weak? Not strong enough? Blah, blah, blah. Whatever the case is, we hear it all the time. And I think that Nintendo did the best that they could for the time being back in 2015, 2016. You need to finalize what you're going to use for your hardware, what you're going to use for your dev kits. And at the time, the Tegra X1 was the best mobile chip available that could get you what you wanted to do and also not break the bank as well. But it was pretty much the super chip, the one that you were going to have to put in there if you were able to launch this system in early 2017. But I do think that with this new system, they're probably going to have it to where it's just as strong, if not stronger, than the Steam Deck that's out right now. And on top of that, I feel that this will take advantage or have new tech built into it that will have the DLSS type of technology, which AMD and other places do have it as well. Heck, Nintendo already uses somewhat of it on the Nintendo Switch with the super resolution. But I think that this is going to be Nvidia's own built-in tech. It's going to take advantage of it fully with tensor cores, and it's going to be able to output the type of picture quality and resolution that you are seeing on some of the more modern systems from like the PlayStation 4 Pro and up, Xbox One X and up, and of course the newer systems as well, but it's going to take the load off of the CPU, GPU with using DLSS, the AI controlled thing there. Now, if you're not sure what that is, just make sure you check out some of the other videos on the channel. But essentially what it does is that it uses AI to actually lighten the load on the system itself to where you can actually get better performance and a cleaner image without pushing that hardware we've seen dlss work wonders on certain pc games and everything so i do think that they're going to be taking advantage of that with the next nintendo switch system so i do feel that this system is probably going to be a 2024 system that's what i'm guessing unless nintendo can do some type of miracle and basically pull some type of rabbit out of the hat and not be affected by this chip shortage. I don't see how they can launch it any sooner than that and not be affected by this chip shortage because it seems like the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox series are going to just continue having this problem throughout 2022. So some people are thinking, oh, well, maybe it comes out like with the Switch Pro or something new in 2022 or 2023. Are we through the chip shortage? Will you be able to supply enough systems out there? It just doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. But hey, once again, Nintendo could pull some magic. They could have got a different deal. I mean, they could secure some different types of parts. I'm not sure what they can do, but maybe they do something like that. So we're going to have to wait and see on that one. But my guess is going to be 2024, but who knows on it. Now, let's talk about what I want to discuss a lot here, and that is the AAA 
ports that we could be seeing. Now, there are quite a number, I would just say a lot, of games that skip Nintendo platforms or they're severely downgraded with lower textures and the frame rates aren't quite as good as the other systems out there, even on the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. And I think that this is where a lot of that changes because we're going to see just a rush, a huge batch, just batches, more like it, not batch, but batches of ports coming over a lot of the games that maybe they were going to put on the Nintendo Switch, but they didn't feel like spending the money because of the type of work they'd have to do. But they've heard about this next system that Nintendo's working on. And if it can launch while well, they're thinking, OK, well, maybe we put it on this system instead. And I think that we saw that a lot once Nintendo proved that they can sell the Nintendo Switch. All of a sudden, these third party developers just started announcing game after game after game. Bandai Namco being one of them saying, oh, man, we didn't know that the system was going to do so well that fast. And they just started porting over everything whereas with the wii u even though their games could be on there they were ps3 and 360 they saw that the sales weren't there and they're like yeah we're not pointing over anything you know when it comes down to it so i think that nintendo's obviously going to have to make sure that this system sells at the beginning but i think it will and we'll get back to that in just a bit but i do feel that a lot of companies are probably just readying up when it comes to getting over their PS4 and Xbox One games on this next Nintendo Switch system. So we could see a lot of the AAA games that did skip the Nintendo Switch, the regular one, come out for this next generation Switch as well. Plus, I do think that we could see patches for games that have already came out, especially if they have the uncapped frame rates. We can see developers go back in and say, hey, if you're playing it on this next Switch, you're going to be able to get better frame rates and a better resolution. We saw that quite a bit with PS4 Pro and also with the Xbox One X. And of course, Microsoft has done a phenomenal job with Xbox Series X and getting the whole next gen patches and updates on there with smart delivery and things like that. So I do feel that Nintendo could do something very similar because I feel that the Nintendo Switch next gen or the Super Switch or the Switch 2, whatever you want to call it, is going to be built off of the back of the regular Nintendo Switch, considering how popular the Switch is. And Nintendo's probably still going to support the Switch even after this next gen Switch comes out, because there's going to be a lot of people that probably still want to buy Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in the booster pack by then as well. So I don't see them dropping cold turkey support for the Nintendo Switch like they dropped the Wii back when that came out. And of course, like they dropped the Wii U heck even before the Nintendo Switch came out. The Wii U was done by mid-2016, but even before that, they didn't plan any other new games. Everything got moved over to the Nintendo Switch. They might do some more dual launches and things of that nature. Now, I do feel that this kind of depends on the type of system Nintendo builds and what they want to do with it. I don't see Furukawa doing the thing that I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking and making some type of crazy gimmicky system like they've done before in the past because the leadership and the people that were in charge of the hardware and making all the decisions, a lot of those people have changed. It's not the same Nintendo that we saw 10, 15 years ago when they started on this blue ocean strategy they're somewhere in between but they're definitely slided more towards okay we've got to make sure that we serve the portable market and nintendo's portable systems were always like hey this is for core gamers and casuals kids anybody can pick this up but we're going to make sure that we have a lot of core games Fire Emblem and stuff like that, RPGs, Golden Sun for the GBA, they made a lot of core games for gamers out there. So I think that Nintendo's kind of more in that realm, but then also opening up a bit with stuff like Nintendo Switch Sports and the Miitopias and other things that they're going to bring over or have already brought over to the Nintendo Switch. So I see Furukawa being a bit more of a callous and conservative businessman and him, yeah, probably putting in a few different weird things in there because that's just Nintendo hardware. But when it it comes down to it the switch is the most basic system that they've done outside of it being a hybrid which is definitely different from what they've done before in the past but there's not any weird quirky things maybe the joy cons with some of the stuff in there but all of it is very functional and fits something that's a normal system overall so i don't see them adding anything that isn't going to be in the same light of what the switch was in terms of difference or what's different compared to anything else i don't see them adding some huge wii u screen or two screens folding out one way or another or anything like that now it's possible but i just don't see furukawa doing that just because of how callous and how shrewd he's been as a businessman he's just like a no-nonsense type of guy and once again there are new people 
that are running this show there. So I just don't see them doing the same thing that Mr. Awada did and other people that ran Nintendo before in the past. But once again, we will see on that one as well. Now, these are just my opinions on that. Now, some of the games that I've talked about before when it comes to some of the RPGs, I mean, stuff like Scarlet Nexus, I think stuff that Bandai Namco has, Code Vein, a lot of these games that did skip over could be coming to the Nintendo Switch. And I think that probably will because we've seen them struggle or just really try to get a lot of ports that just like, ugh, man, it's kind of rough on here. But you know what? It works for the most part. It runs in a good enough frame rate. But then we've seen games, you know, like Mortal Kombat that were very ambitious games when it comes to like a big fighting game. And they did a great job trying to port it over. But then stuff like the single player, like Crypt Mode, like where you go underneath the ground and stuff like that, that didn't work very well on the nintendo switch and we've seen other developers do that i think the latest thing that we're seeing here is now the hogwarts legacy we're going to see how that runs on the nintendo switch and what happens there i'm guessing they're going to get the same team that did the mortal kombat game on the switch they're going to get that same team to make the switch version of hogwarts legacy so it'll be a little bit of a mixed bag but still impressive compared to other titles out there so i do think that this is going to be a very interesting time period for nintendo because they're still just rolling along right there's no need for a next gen switch or a new switch right now people are buying triangle strategy people are loving games like pokemon legends everyone's having a lot of fun with stuff like that and heck triangle strategy sold over 800,000 units digital physical ship units all there so that's really good for that type of game and pokemon legends continues to dominate at retail and also on the eShop as well along with a slew of other games people are loving the mario kart too so nintendo's good when it comes to revenue coming in and when it comes to sales worldwide the switch is still selling really well the oleds are pretty much sold out anytime that I go to a store. I don't even see a Nintendo Switch OLED up there. I've seen a few Switch lights every now and then, but don't even see a Switch OLED. So things are going fairly well. But I do see Nintendo kind of pulling up the ace up their sleeve in just a bit here and kind of continuing on with that when it comes to what they're doing worldwide. But we'll see how everything works out. But what are your thoughts on this when it comes to the next gen Nintendo Switch and if we're going to see a lot more. I'm guessing there will be when it comes to certain titles. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and of course what games you would like to see come over. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you're someone new, and click that notification bell to get my videos first. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you for the next one. Peace.